And now for the last of this afternoon's sporting events. We've got... And a very good evening and welcome back here to the Hexagon in Reading on this, our second night of the State Express World Team Snooker Classic. Just let me remind you that six nations are playing here, prize money in excess of £40,000 for this, the World Championship of Snooker Nations. Well, it all began yesterday and so far Wales, the defending champions, the nation have won this title for the last two years. This is the third year of the competition. They've been really hogging the headlines. They got the whole thing underway yesterday when they beat Canada by four matches to two. All ties over the best of six matches. Now Wales have been in play again today and they're playing one of the new nations here, the Republic of Ireland. Now, if you're watching this afternoon, you'd have seen Wales getting off to a good start. Let's just have a check on the situation as we left it around about five o'clock. Doug Mountjoy had beaten Patsy Fagan, the former United Kingdom champion, two frames to one. All matches are over the best of three frames. Ray Reardon had a bit of a fright against a new professional, just turned professional in January, Eugene Hughes. He lost the first frame, but Reardon came back to beat Hughes, two frames to one, which gave Wales a 2-0 lead. Remember, the tie is over the best of six matches, which left us with Desi Sheehan, yet another newish professional playing for this Republic of Ireland team, against Terry Griffiths, the man who's got the best record in the State Express World Team Classic. Here's the start of the match, the very first frame, and it's Desi Sheehan breaking off there, and your commentators will be Ted Lowe and John Spencer. And the 31-year-old wow. Dubliner, making his British TV debut, takes the first blood and he's nicely behind the blue. That's a good shot from Desi there, Teddy. He wants to get this red away from the black spot. Because if, if he pots the black with the red there, of course, it ties the black up completely. He's got two reds towards the bulk, so the position here doesn't uh, matter too much. Desi Sheehan comes to our screens with quite an experience. He's already been All-Ireland amateur champion on two occasions, turned pro in January of this year, so quite a young man in the professional world. But against this man, he's got some terrific opposition. Yes, Teddy, had a very quick addressing action with the rest there. Uh, I've never seen anyone address it so quickly as he did there. And Terry is querying with the referee the cue ball, obviously a, a slight piece of dirt, <laughs> dust, or some other animal on the cue ball. Terry's gone too far there with the white. He wanted to say the other side of the blue. All he can do now is roll the blue in and 
play the, ro the long red into the left hand black pocket. Six. Well, wow, John, I would have expected Terry to have got that one. Yes, he left the white a little near the, the side cushion, which hampered his, the bridge hand, uh, made it a little difficult for his queuing. taking no chances. Everything has been said about Terry Griffiths, his delightful, smooth, blowing action. So far in this uh, World Team Classic, uh, Terry Griffiths has been playing very positively. Terry, just looking here, he's going to play safe into the, to the bulk end of the table, but of course he doesn't want to play onto one red and knock another red over the corner pocket, so he's just looking the path the red will take after he hits it. A very fine shot, which cost him four points. <laughs> and Sheehan decides to put Terry back in. Doesn't fancy the position left for him. Yes, again, it's easy to get the white down to the bulk end of the table, but he's, he's going to be cutting one of those reds towards the right and black pocket. In fact, he, he's electing to go very fine off the other side of the reds so as not to knock a ball to the pocket. That's an extremely good safety shot, John. Desi Sheehan here is uh, one of the youngsters in today's professional world who started late. He didn't start playing the game of snooker until he was 17 years of age. Normally, the professional star starts about 10. Played an excellent shot there, Ted, off the side cushion and top cushion with side to just clip the red and go back into the bulk end of the table. Terry can just get through to that loose red on the left hand side. Early stages of the first frame of this third match Wales versus the Republic of Ireland.
not one of Terry's best. That could be five points away. Republic of Ireland won. Yes, I think Wales it was rather five. fortunate that the white went in the pocket there, Ted, because of course now it's relatively safe. Had it stayed out of the pocket, you would have left Terry in with a couple of reds into the other corner pocket. I don't know whether Desi can get between the yellow and brown, Ted, but I think the only chance he's got is to rest on this red on the back cushion here. But whether he can get the angle to do that or not, I don't know. He could be in a lot of trouble if he can't. They must be terribly anxious moments for him, John. A very big ordeal for this young man. Yes, it's bad enough making a professional debut, uh, Ted, but of course, in a team uh, tournament like this, there's more pressure than ever. Obviously, you don't want to let your colleagues down. And he's gone for the red you suggested. Beautifully played. Beautiful shot, Ted, because of course, he couldn't come off the one cushion. He had to play it off two cushions and judge the angle perfectly. ball down towards that bulk cushion. This one's not so easy. No, Ted, of course, the blue is stopping him getting to this left-hand side of the reds, uh, which would have taken him back down the table, so it's another problem for him here. An unusual start to the world of snooker had uh, Desi Sheen. He's talking to me prior to this big match and telling me that in fact it was his mother who was a player and started him off. Normally it's the father that does that. Our stroke, wheels, four.
just one point in it at this early stage. So near and yet so far. Bit of a chancy shot that to play though, Ted, because although even if he'd have potted the red, I don't think he was on a colour. We've seen uh, two matches so far in this Welsh uh, Republic of Ireland clash. And uh, John, on, on uh, both the previous matches, the Welsh team seemed to have started off very shakily. Yes, they have, Ted. Uh, I don't think either of the two Welsh players played the normal game. They seemed very, very shaky and could both have lost the first two frames. Now, I wonder what da damage Terry has done here. <coughs> Certainly unhappy about that particular shot, and we will now see the prowess of this young Irishman. Certainly got a good chance here, Ted. Of course, the one Reddy wants to get rid of as soon as possible is the one over the right-hand pocket here, because that's the one that's stopping the black going. Five. This position here is not too healthy. I think he'll take your red now, John. Yes, he'd like to have got on it better than this. I mean, it's hard to control the white at this distance, but he should finish on the blue at least, if not the pink. Just where he didn't want to be. <laughs> A good one. The only problem is, Ted, when he pots this black, of course, it goes down onto the green spot, with the red being covering the black spot. So he's going to have to concentrate now on the blue and the pink. 23. goes to 30. 30.
31. Potting these balls very cleanly. Thirty-six. Yes, he's looking good for this frame now, Ted. He just has to pot this pink and one more red to leave Terry needing snookers. Forty-three. And the difference, as you saw, 44 points. Forty-four. Only 43 points left on the table now. I think he's got a bit straight on the pink there, Ted, and we'll just have to run it in and play it into the left-hand black pocket. Fifty-seven. He's just glancing at the scoreboard. He's well in front on this frame. Must take the first frame from Terry. Fifty-eight. Delightful break this by the 31-year-old young man from du uh, Dublin. 75. Great start then for the young Irishman. Well, couldn't complain with that, could he? And he started off pretty well in the second frame as well. In two visits to the table, he'd already got 16 points on the board before Terry Griffiths, his experienced Welshman, a former world champion, had scored anything. Nine. <clears throat> that makes it all square, 16 points each. 16. Seventeen. That was a very bad shot from Terry there. He never hit the ball at all. The timing was completely adrift there. I think he was playing to screw back with side for the red into the middle or the other, the bottom red into the left-hand black pocket. Got no, no <coughs> screw on the ball at all. Thirty.
become just a little awkward here. Thirty-one. Perfect strength. Almost too straight on this black. <clears throat> Goes twenty two points ahead. Again, he's not got the angle he wanted on this black. And I think the only thing he can do is pot the black with a lot of right hand side to go down for one of the bulk colours, the reds in the bulk area. Very well read. What Tulu will want to do here, I think, is either 49. when he pots the red, is leave it short of the blue or come down for the black to disturb these three reds after the potted the colour. Well, although Sheehan managed to get a red and a black after that, Terry Griffiths never really lost command of the frame and finally just had the pink to put down, and there it was. The frame at one all in the match. A reminder at this point, for those of you who are expecting to see our published programme, If Winter Comes, that because of industrial action by certain members of the Association of Broadcasting Staff, the play has been postponed to a later date. And so we're continuing this evening with our snooker coverage from Reading until the third round of the Bridge Tournament Grand Slam at 9.45. So there we are, snooker right through until then. Let me just put it all back into perspective for you. The Republic of Ireland in a little bit of trouble now. They'd lost the first two matches of this six-match tie. Now Desi Sheehan's little flurry against Terry Griffiths had been stopped. He'd won the first frame and then lost the second, so there were now one frame all. One frame left to play in this vital match between Des Sheehan, the new professional, and Terry Griffiths. So, so much depending on this, so let's join it right at the very start, and it's Des Sheehan, the Irishman, breaking off. Not a very good break that Ted, although he's been very fortunate for the white to finish on the side cushion there. He hit the reds much too thick and has spread them all, all over the table. Leaving Terry, I might say, a very difficult shot.
and he's even split them more now. <laughs> yes, Ted, that, that was a real lunge at that ball then. He, I think he's fit, certainly feeling the pressure. He really threw himself at the ball. Wiping his hands there, I'm sure the butterflies are working overtime in his tummy. Not very easy, though, Ted, though. There's just the one red that Terry Skew was near there well, is potable, and he's going to have to screw down to try and get it onto the pink of the blue. But if he, is, if he catches the red near the pink spot, he could finish on nothing. One. And that's not the best of positions. Seven. So they're going to try and stun the white across to the right hand side of the table here for the pink or the black into the corner pocket. Certainly not coming easy, John. No, he's struggling a bit with this break. Um, the, the only shot I think he can play is the pink into the middle pocket. Republic of Ireland versus the might of Wales. I think we might see a safety shot here, Ted. It's uh, none of these three reds near the black will go, so I, I'm sure he'll take the white into the bulk end of the table. only then out of that Desi Sheehan completely undecided <laughs> and that brought a smile to his face. Played a safety shot by screwing the cue ball down to the bolt cushion and with several kisses gets a red into the pocket.
one Republic of Ireland. Just sufficient strength to reach the green. I think Terry will be trying to hit the red near the left hand black pocket here and try and rest behind it. Because um, that appears to be the only safe position on the table here. He's giving this one a lot of thought. Yes, Ted, I think what he's trying to do here is go on to the ball cushion, the side cushion, between the yellow and the blue, and those two reds on the right-hand side where his cue is now, and rests on, the, on these three reds behind the black. He's unlucky there, Ted. He's just caught the red on the side cushion. If he just misses that red, he finishes uh, against these three on the, behind the black. As it is, he's left the easy red into the middle pocket. And that is purely inexperience. He would have certainly liked a better position than this, John. Yes, I think he's just going to play the snook behind the brown. Wheels, one. <coughs> just 17 points the difference. A reminder, once again, for those of you who might have been expecting to see our published programme, if winter comes, that because of industrial action by certain members of the Association of Broadcasting Staff, the play has been postponed to a later date. And we're continuing this evening with our snooker coverage from Reading until the third round of the Bridge Tournament, Grand Slam, at 9.45. This frame started off in a bit of a flurry, John, with the uh, 
bowls being split all over the table and suddenly seems to have come to a standstill. That looks a very good shot, Ted, uh, because it's very difficult to get back into the ball from this side of the table. Yes, yeah, a very good safety one, that. It may force Terry into having to go at this uh, third red from the right, unless he can hit those two behind the black and go around the back of the black down to the ball can. And he could easily have done some damage here. I think this is the crucial shot of the frame now, Ted, if he takes this black, um, because he's going into the, those four reds below the black. Republic of Ireland, one. Courageous shot. Didn't quite come off. Of <coughs> 16 points the difference. I think he's going to take the red now between the pink and black into the left-hand corner pocket. Six. Just all the white there for the pink. Seven. Down for the blue this time. Fourteen. Completely out of position here. <clears throat> yes, it was a very bad shot that ten because other than being hampered by the blue, of course, the black's over the pocket. It's only the blue that's stopping him queuing at it. Nineteen. <clears throat>
Oh, dear. Bit unlucky for a Terry, that. <coughs> 31 points in it, and five reds to go. All five are pretty safe. Staying at the top here for the two reds. A trifle too hard, I'd suggest. Yes, he's still on the red, Ted, but I think he's gone a little bit further than he intended doing. Republic of Ireland, eight. Wheels, 37. Republic of Ireland, 14. Terry Griffiths just waiting his time. 23 points ahead. Requires this frame for yet another victory for Wales. He's a bit straight on that brown, and he has to get back up the table for the two reds on the side cushion there, so he's taking this green. Four. Five. the match slowly drifting away from the Republic of Ireland. Well, Yes, Ted, Terry just wants this one red uh, to leave Desi leaving snookers. Thirteen. And he sits right behind the pink. Forty two in it, thirty five on the table. Wheels nineteen. 
Well, and that really had settled Desi Sheehan's fate in that frame in the match. And Terry Griffiths took the match two frames to one. That final frame, by the way, lasted 27 minutes. And for those who keep the records, the frame score in that third and final frame was 88 to Griffiths and 19 to Sheehan. Incidentally, you were hearing the uh, words of John Spencer on that frame, a guest commentator here today for us and uh, standing in, in fact, for John Pullman. As we mentioned yesterday, a lot of people still ringing up. Where's John, a regular member of the commentary team? Unfortunately, had a road accident a little while ago. He's in hospital. Uh, I'm sure he's listening here tonight. We wish him well. Hope to see him back at the microphone very soon. So the Republic of Ireland then having a bit of a bad day here against Wales, this defend the defending champions. There's the three matches they played in the first half. Doug Mountjoy beating Patsy Fagan, really the strongest man of the team, the former United Kingdom champion. Ray Reardon beating Eugene Hughes and Desi Sheehan, the other new professional in the team, as we've seen going out to Terry Griffiths. So they were 3-0 down, which left three more matches to play in this evening's session on the second day of the State Express World Team Challenge. Mountjoy against Sheehan, Griffiths against Eugene Hughes, and finishing off with the captains Ray Reardon and Patsy Fagan. So the Republic of Ireland with it all to do. Well, as you can see, it was Desi Sheehan who had to come out again to start this evening session, trying to recover from his defeat against Terry Griffiths, to play Doug Mountjoy, already with that victory over Patsy Fagan. Let's join it with a frame just in progress, no points on the board, and a puzzled-looking Desi Sheehan trying to do something about it. Well, first opportunity to Republic of Ireland. That's come out quite nicely. Have to pull a little on the cue ball here to avoid the corner pocket. Nine. Well, overcut. Very bold shot. Bearing in mind that uh, they need every frame to draw level in this match. Three frames, three matches to go. One. Nine. 
Well, he couldn't uh, wish to have a nicer set of uh, reds to go for than he has here. And surprisingly, not a great deal on there that one would consider as being easy. Eleven. Well, Rex, I Eleven. would say that that was a, rather a let off for Sheehan there. Yes, um, when he screwed back up the table there, Manjoy. Big uh, margin to get on those reds and came too far. And uh, well, now this is uh, certainly a good chance here for De Sheehan. Those two reds just on the side of the black causing a little bit of a problem. Well, one. won't be too one happy with that one. Well, Doug uh, tried to disturb those two reds there, knock the one out of the way, but unfortunately just moved the other one a little bit close to the black and has now completely tied the black up. But the pink is nicely on and one or two reds open and the pink will be open into the one corner pocket and the one centre pocket, so not too bad. Well, that uh, shot there just disturbing the two reds and this 14. will now re really open the pink. 15. No problem with just uh, potting the pink and onto that other red just to the left of the pink and then it will be completely open. Well, decided to go for the other red, rather surprisingly, because he could have stunned through just a couple of inches. 21. 22. 28. Well, I think Doug played to get underneath the two reds there, hoping that he might take a middle pocket red, but he's got a corner pocket a little further to travel. Uh, 33. Well. 
say 34 the lead now for Doug Marshall. Well, I would One. think he's made the big mistake there. He's certainly put Doug in here for the kill, I would think. And One. it's quite obvious the way Doug is playing that he's completely relaxed, feeling that possibly Wales are through and has all the confidence in the world. Twelve, Wales, Republic of Ireland, eleven, Wales, fifty-six. Well, there was no real stopping Doug Mountjoy in that sort of form, and with Sheehan needing the snookers, Mountjoy took the frame, which meant that with uh, the next one to play, Sheehan had to win it for the Republic of Ireland. If his opponent, Doug Mountjoy, took it, the match was all over, and Wales had assured themselves of a place in the semi-final. Sheehan with the greatest moment of pressure, of pressure in his short professional career. Well, young Des Sheehan, he seems to be a very urgent young man, very impatient and a very fine potter, but uh, what? I would think he'll have to curb his enthusiasm a little playing these fellows. Well, Doug looks to the heavens and is thankful for a nice fluke there. And he's got a green which will give him the opportunity of screwing back up the table here to get amongst some very open reds.
Five. Well, I think he gave that all the pace that he dare there. It was rather an acute angle into the middle. And he's gone a bit straight on the blue, but he's still got a red there. I think he may have played this time to, uh, he's got the angle, yeah. get that red near the pocket actually, just through the uh, middle of those two reds. Well, he's got the perfect angle there to get across onto Eleven. that one onto the black. And this, uh, this could develop into something now. Twenty six. Might possibly just screw on to the other red this time, just hold himself on the back. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. Well, he didn't really get hold of that one. He wanted to get below the red to be on the black. So, tough blue here. Thirty-five. Well, wow, nice. Thirty-four point lead. I think there is a red there just at the back of the pack that we'll just squeeze by. Looks a little bit tight. I think if he's straight on this blue, he'll probably just stun run through a little bit and leave that red into the other corner pocket. Well, I just threw just that few inches. Six. This is the first time that I've seen uh, Deshian play, and uh, he's got. A good cue action, but his final backswing looks a little bit quick. And that final backswing is where you really make absolutely sure okay. before striking the ball. It needs to be a little bit slower. And 15. you'll probably notice the difference with the two players when Manjoy plays his final backswing He's very nice and slow. Twenty two. Well, he obviously played too go into the cluster of reds there, but uh, miss them completely.
Well, that's about all he could do then. He obviously didn't want to disturb them uh, for the fear of leaving one, but of course he's given Mountjoy an, a reasonably easy opportunity of perhaps getting behind the black here. Republic of Ireland 23, Wales 25. Well, I shall be surprised if he leaves anything uh, on this shot. Just a simple shot to trickle into the reds would be better if he can to go to the left-hand side of the tail because less chance of leaving anything on that side. And that was the safe side of the tail to go because of that loose red that will go into the centre pocket. And John Smyrd there has declared a touching ball and Doug is obviously going to try and get right behind the green here. So this is pace judgment and that's beautifully done. Again, there's only that one red that is open uh, there. I would think the shot here would be to come off the side cushion and just trickle into the reds, but to make sure that the pace is far enough not to leave that red. Obviously playing. Foul, six. Well, he didn't um, play the shot as he intended. That got right into him a little bit more, but he'll be quite happy with that. Well, it looks as though we have a repeat performance here. Back down behind the green, touching ball again. Well, this time, uh, not quite as easy to play the safety shot because the reds are just open that little bit more. Now, this is uh, real problems. shot as it looks trying to judge that short angle onto the cushion no that uh, it was uh, a difficult position that uh, Jack and this is now a good opening for Doug Manjo to finish this match off <coughs> giving himself a choice of Two reds here, one to the central, one to the corner. Eight. Nine. Well, during the break period, Doug seemed very happy with life. The fact that he thought uh, Wales were going to pull this match off, and this is certainly reflected in his play. He's playing with complete freedom and confidence. Twenty-four. 
31. Just a little too far. 38. For comfort. I think he'll pop this yellow, but he would like to have been just a little straighter. So 81-23, the frame virtually over and indeed the match. 43. 47. And almost perfect strength there. Cue ball right round the table, pink in the corner pocket. <laughs> well, he let me down. <laughs> That's a very fine performance by Doug Mountjoy. That little fluke didn't really matter, and Mount Joy said to me tonight as he walked into the auditorium, just watch me go. Well, he certainly went, and that settled it all for Wales, and certainly settled it for the Republic of Ireland. They'd been whitewashed, 4-0, you can't come back from that in a six-match tie. So Wales have won their group, and who becomes second in that group and goes forward into the semi-finals depends on the match between Canada and the Republic of Ireland, and that will be played on Wednesday. Well, we now move into Group 1, and there they are, England, Australia, and Northern Ireland, all involved in that. Group 1 start their play, in fact, tomorrow, and the very first match features Australia and England. Australia with Ian Anderson, Eddie Charlton, that great campaigner, and Paddy Morgan, who is an Australian, of course, now, and playing against England with Steve Davis, John Spencer, who's been taking a look at the players in our commentary box today, and David Taylor. But without any doubt, so many people will be coming here to the Hexagon in Reading to see Steve Davis. Now, Davis, it seems remarkable that it was only 12 months ago that his tremendous campaign really started, and now he's become the hottest property in the game. Next month, we move on to the United Kingdom Championships in Preston. And it was there that Steve Davis, just a year ago, began this tremendous run of his. Remember when he played Alex Higgins in the final? And here's an example of how he plays snooker. He's already on a break of 32. It is very noticeable that for the first time in the tournament, I see that Alex Higgins isn't sitting down in his chair. He's full of concentration watching Stevie play. And that is surely a test that he's very determined indeed. Well, it seems that 
Steve Davis had his little flurry of bad shots and he seems to be right back in the groove now. 53. Break of 53 so far. I think Steve will have to come down on the red that's over the middle pocket this time, off the pink. And uh, helped by a ni nice little kiss on the blue. We could see quite a, quite a big break here. Well, it is a break, big break at the minute, 60, but there's a possible, possible 100 on here from Steve. Just think he's got the angle on the black that he uh, wanted, Jack. So he possibly go for the green. I think the red sitting in the middle of the, the four reds will go into the top right-hand pocket. So my guess he's going to take the green and get on the middle red. Sixty-four. And Alex now requiring snookers. 70. Beautiful shot there from Steve. A lot of top on his cue ball to follow through and cannon into the two reds. 76. Just a little bit short with the white this time. Well, what a dream of a player this young man is, Dennis. He really is a methodical young man, isn't he? Everything is so clean and tidy that he plays. Yes, Jack, and uh, at the minute he's thinking very well, and with Steve's cue action, if he's thinking well, he's not going to miss many shots. Beautiful show. 88. Break of 88 so far. And he just overran the blue there. I'm sure he played for the blue in the centre. Nicely on the yellow. 94. I think the green will go past the pink into its own pocket. We'll soon find out. No, in fact, he's played for the green into the yellow pocket. It's a little bit too close to the cushion. 
But the way Steve's playing, I think he'll lock this in without any trouble at all. Ninety-nine. That's it. And what a beautiful break. And as Stevie Davis pots the black here, he will surely go into a lead of four frames to two. And having said that, he lets me down. Full of smiles. And what a glorious break, Dennis. Dennis Taylor watching Steve Davis become UK champion over Alex Higgins. Well, Davis in action tomorrow. They play Australia tonight at 12.35. We'll look at their chances and the action and the stories of this championship.